Welcome to Reading Rainbow. <laughs> What's oh, going on? Like <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome. To, uh, happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Change Your Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. We got an awesome show planned for tonight. Uh, tonight we'll be talking about when other races look at you, or you look at other races, is that perception a reality? Going to be an awesome show planned for you guys, but... Uh, before we get started, I want to say what's up to my awesome producer, DJ Lab. What's going on, brother? The man can't, I mean, I'm hanging. Also, the Slick 316, you know. I want to say what's up to y'all out there. Also, give a big shout out to my assistant, Joni. Um, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> Talked to Joni yesterday and everything. So, um, uh, wish her uh, uh, speed of recovery, everything. She's doing well with everything. But uh, I'm super excited about tonight's show. Super excited about tonight's show because that's one of the things I was thinking about. You know, like I uh, mentioned before, I wanted to bring a lot of good shows. And even next month, we're going to hit a whole lot harder because with it being Black History Month, Uh-oh. we're going to be uh, dealing with a lot of shows that's uh, impacting the black community. Okay. You know, we ain't going to be dealing necessarily in history, but more so from a, a financial empowerment, activity-wise, different kind of things. A lot of thought-provoking shows uh, from yours truly. And that's right. That's and everything. right. So, Super excited about that. Um, before we get started, we do like we always going to do, rehash the previous week. Whereas, you know, right now uh, we're underway with tax season. Been all the way live. I appreciate all the support. You guys know I'm the owner of Majestic Business Services. Uh, as the show going on, we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, uh, the tax business, get some information out about that. But we're started with tax season and everything. So far, so good. I have not been sleeping that much. <laughs> and everything like that, so that's a, that's a good sign. That mastermind Real good class side. that I yeah I attended back in October, man. I put in play a lot of practices mm-hmm. that I learned from that. It's been super beneficial because what I remember one of the guys that uh was in the class with me, he said, man, this is my seventh or eighth one. I'm like shit, you know, I was already pulling my damn teeth to pay that money right. to come to one damn time. But they've been <laughs> following this guy around the country like a tribe. But what he said stuck with me. He said. This is my seven eighth one. A lot of you guys, they go to it just like I do, but you can tell who leaves and doesn't uh, implement the strategies that he gives everybody. Oh, okay. And everything. So that kind of stuck with me. Like, well, shit, I ain't going to be one on one. So going through my notes, it's a lot of stuff I haven't done, but it was a lot of practical goals or, or, or practices, rather, that he gave that mm-hmm. you don't have to spend money on and everything. I've implemented, man, it's, been, it's impacted me greatly. Uh, so far, so you know, again, you know, I appreciate our support. And just to be in the services, we'll give um, some information about the company as we go through the show. Second uh, of all, I want to say that uh, I got this new package, uh, new program to set up. And I know, you know, I was had uh, the course going out about the, the tax business. We'll start it up this summer, but I got a program that's going to roll out of February. I already got it going on, going uh, set up. But uh, I want to make one more meeting with some of my mentors before I roll it out. But long story short, I got a, a program for a lot of these uh, Park and Red youth, uh, youth organizations. Well, you know, you see all the time people out here doing the GoFundMe. You see the little poor kids out there. I'm saying selling po, water. Poor pitiful. Nah, I ain't talking about selling water. Got a damn empty helmet on. Oh, okay, with the uniform on. With the basketball uniform <laughs> on. <laughs> okay. Job, man. You know, just out here getting <laughs> donations, you know, uh, uh, with doing it. And what has happened, you know, a lot of these uh, uh, municipalities have banned kids being at these corners. You know, taking donations like that. But long story short, I have a program set in place for some of these youth or grant. Well, all these youth programs, how you to get proper funding. Well, you don't have to be sitting out here begging for no money. Right. How to get those relationships and get everything started where you get that kind of money going. So I'll be rolling that out next month. I got to uh, do one last bit of fine tuning, but I'll be blasting that out in the next week or so uh, with that coming out. I'm super excited about that. Um, I also want to give a big shout out to my son, PJ Bird. He got senior night. Uh, this Saturday up at Jonesboro. Uh, he's been the, the manager for the basketball team. He acts like he's the owner of the team. Uh, <laughs> he has that this uh, Saturday. So a big shout-out to P.J. You know, we'll be at Jonesboro High School. And it's 3 o'clock Saturday at Jonesboro High School. We got senior night. Yeah. S- senior day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm super proud of P, man. Uh, yeah, P don't, uh, he don't ever stop amazing me. He never stop amazing me. Real sharp fella and everything. But I'm super proud of him. And uh, that's been it in a nutshell and stuff, man. I'm uh, I'm super excited. 2020, I'm pumped for and everything. Uh-huh. Um, changing lives, the, uh, the the YouTube channel. We have like a staggered growth and everything, but I'm learning a lot and everything. So people, if you're tuning in, especially if you're looking at Facebook, 
Instagram. Go to the YouTube channel, Change the Lives. We'll put the link everywhere on there to the, uh, the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. But even with that said, I appreciate all the following and all the support that we've got, you know, through Instagram, uh, especially like on Facebook. Man, it's been amazing. Excuse me, the amount of growth that we've had on the Facebook channel. I know uh, Slick 6316 have done an awesome job with helping me out with that and everything. But I hope you guys are tuning in and liking the page and listening to the show and appreciating liking some of the information we're putting out there because I work real hard to, to, to give information uh, to the community and make sure you guys are getting great stuff. And like tonight when we're talking about the show, when other races look at you, what is their perception of the reality? I want to really discuss a, 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 a subject in terms of when people view other people and they have already preconceived views about it, you know, is it true? Or people see you, is it true? And I think we got a great show planned with that. But uh, last again, this is a Change of Lives hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. Go to the Instagram, Facebook page, or YouTube page, put in Change of Lives, or Deontay Burden, it'll pop up. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, look at the videos. Uh, leave comments, you like it or don't like it, whatever, you know, uh, uh, give me that so we have some kind of activity going. Um, you can inbox me, message me, just let me know, hey, Deontay, why don't you do a show on this, do a show on that, or whatever. So, you know, just keep the interaction going. Again, I really, really appreciate all the support you guys have given me so far. Hey, uh, if anybody's tuning in on YouTube, we had some digging going on out here the other day, and they messed up our dang on Wi-Fi, I think, because it keeps dropping and picking up the service. So I apologize. The video will be uploaded later. But, uh, yeah. We will be complaining, but as soon as they start digging, we start messing up. So, well, <laughs> just like any true soldier, we what adapt and overcome. That's right. We'll like upload the video later on. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, after the show, we'll upload the video. So, there you know. go. Yeah, yeah, well, too easy, too easy. Just like any true soldier. <laughs> but again, the night show will be asking uh, when looking at when other when looking at other races or people looking at you is that perception is a reality, and uh. I know a lot of times we see certain people, certain groups, and you, know, you see Hispanics, you see whites, you see Asians, you see Indians. Everybody got vast opinions about, well, they do this and they do that, and we don't do this and they don't do that. And uh, that's what really had me intrigued about this show because uh, I just wanted to, because you hear so much conversations about what well, we talk about black folks, what black folks do and what black folks don't do, and right. then our ideas, what we look at other people do, and just what they do this and they do that, just off, I guess, going in their damn store, going in their restaurant, mm -hmm. or shit you're seeing on TV without really knowing. Uh, anything you know so that's why I wanted to talk about this show so I started off man I, I want to go into a little story uh, uh, about myself personally you know back before I was uh, Mr. BMU before I was proud member of 100 black men before I was Mr. Black Empowerment you know I was back in Bamberg Germany <laughs> you know <laughs> back in what 96 97 mm. and uh with some nice little blue eyed frawl eyes. <laughs> Not blue eyed. Yeah, blue. Blue, blonde hair. And I was having a damn blast. <laughs> I was having a ball. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Black Man United, all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he, he ate the forbidden fruit. And he got full, too. You know? <laughs> and I just remember one, one day, so. My girlfriend Cat, me and Cat still cool. We, we, we do cat taxes, and uh, uh, and her husband tax. Shout out to Cat. We sitting in there at a McDonald's. I remember like it was yesterday. Sitting there with this German girl at the McDonald's, eating my burger, you know, feeling good and everything. I'm about 18, 19 years old. Right. Um, and walk in about six. I swear, eight foot, big bald head, skinheads. Really? I said, shit. and he wasn't like. Regular skinheads, they're like eight feet tall, eight feet wide. Um, Leather jackets, boots. Black black jacket, black pants, black boots, red shoelaces, I remember it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. not only were they big and white, but they had these big-ass purebred German Rottweilers. God damn. And I'm sitting here like the German, the Rottweilers about the same size that Chevette I left on Bankhead. <laughs> and they walked in, you say, and I seen I them. I said, well, damn, boy, you done damn bust your ass to get off Bankhead. <laughs> and this is not what? how Pooch is supposed to go. Right. Then we got on the other side of the world, finna Same. get killed in a McDonald's <laughs> with a white girl. <laughs> and that's some shit. Yeah. I was scared as hell, lad. Really? I was like, oh, these white boys finna kill my ass. They finna kill. And I seen them coming in, and 
The funny part, ain't no funny part. She just a damn laughing. He he he, here they come. Here they come. <laughs> you know, you're going to get some of this with me too right, now. Right, right. I'm going to throw you in with it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was scared as hell. Like, I seen a big old white boy coming. And they just walking in with a big Because in Europe, you know, you can bring your, animal, your pets in. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah, they come in with it. Come in with you. So they coming in. Big old white boys. I'm sitting there like, God, wow. to say how Pooch's supposed to go. And, man, uh, you got off my head. They, and they, man, I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> Mm. Oh, yeah, Germany. With a white girl. <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to hide. Hey, get away from all the robbing and killing. I'm a man. Boy, boy, boy. And uh, they walking in. They came in, right? And, uh, you know, my pride ain't finna be sitting down, you know, punking. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking up. I remember like yesterday, coming. And I had one of uh, CDs, you know, you know, they better have CD, come back, mm-hmm. this player, your headphones. Yeah, your uniform on. Huh? No, I had a uniform on. I had a uniform oh, on okay. and everything and everything. But, uh, you know, they have a lot of uh, a big African community there. But you can tell an American from African. Right, right, right. We all clean cut, a split soldier. Mm-hmm. But I had, uh, you know, they better have CD players and everything. So I had my Walkman sitting on my desk. But I had a CD right, right. sitting on the, uh, 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 the table. Okay. So he walking past me. I'm looking up. And he looked down. He said, Fuji's. I like them. I said, shit, I do too. And I'm sitting there like, and all the rest of them looked at me, gave a thumbs up, and they went on to the counter and ordered their food. This Get the fuck Yeah. Really? Yeah. He said, Fuji's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I remember, yeah. You know? And I said, man. And what? And I, and I, I say bring all this up to just say what we were talking about tonight, just so preconceived. Right. I just knew. They were going to whoop your oh, ass. Oh, boy, we finna. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> But they could care less. They, they didn't get, they didn't care too. They now, got their food and didn't think no more about you. I ain't thought I know. And, and I will say this too. You know, you got a more uh, orthodox following of skinheads in Europe than you do here. You mm-hmm. know, you got a different kind of persuasion as far as can skinheads as far as you know, especially how they views in terms of attacking. They just more so believe in what they believe in, mm-hmm. but it wasn't everything. But I just in this particular day, uh, uh-uh, I seen these big old six white boys coming in like. Oh Lord! <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! And he said, "Fujis, I like them." I said, "Get the woo. <laughs> oh Lord!" And you know, again, man, that just blew my mind away because, you know, a lot of times, you know, we we have those ideas and uh, uh, about certain people, uh, and certain things and stuff. And we just be all over the place with our opinions and our views. Mm-hmm. And that was just one of them times and stuff. And, you know, and I had to kind of just really uh, recalibrate myself, you know. Now, I didn't immediately give up white girls. I'm going to there for a while. I'm going to there for a while. <laughs> but I probably gave them views on the skinhead. Well, well. <laughs> I ain't shit up. You know what I'm saying? Man, I ain't let them go for a while. Kevin, like, you know, and everything. Well, 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 so let me ask you a question. Since we're talking about the white girl. Oh, Lord. What's that? Why was you so into the white girl? Was it your perception of the black women that was around your back head or what? Oh, no, no, no. It was like, I mean, to be, I mean that's, that's a good perception. question. No. It's a good question. We no. talk about perception. No, 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 no. It wasn't. No, no, no. Because he was into it like, hell yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'll tell you what it was, to be totally honest with you. It wasn't even, uh, perception it was a survival oh, okay. it was uh <laughs> when you uh stationed overseas i mean probably for every 500 black men there's one black woman oh, okay. and uh and then you're talking about like so, so you just got your choice oh, okay. and you ain't got no bad choices but i'm just saying <laughs> to you like you know i'm just i'm just saying now you get back stateside you get back you know you back in the cities is a little different right. but over there it's just survival you know what i'm okay. saying I love my people, but I don't love my people too much to be without a woman. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to know, like, right, right, you know, right. again, and this 18 year old poochie and everything, right, right. I was living my best life, the best <laughs> and the better. But I just remember that, you know, there was a time before uh, Mr. Black Black was on and everything. I was having it, man. I was having it. I used to love it over there, too. I, you know, he's called me Pooch. Hey, Pooch. <laughs> so I love it. Like you ate, was soaking it up. Ate like. it up. Ate it up. <laughs> Where can she do it? 
<laughs> European poochie. Mm. But nah, that was cool. But again, that goes back. Let me get back on track. They go back in track. We start talking about those perceptions and reality and everything. Just, you know, everybody look at certain things that and really don't really know what's going on. You, you, you hear so much, you know, don't judge a book by a cover. But we all do it and everything. And, and again, you know, you see it there a lot of times when, you know, we have people say all the time, even when we talk, black folks need to do more than that. In the, in the Asian, uh, the money go here, in the Asian community, money goes around so many times, the Indian community. You know, how the hell do you know? Right. I mean, how the hell, how many Asians do you know beside the one who stole you say, and you go in and say good morning every time? You ain't really, you know, I mean, I look at myself personally, if the main interaction I had with people from other races, uh, especially when you start looking at uh, uh, people from outside the United States, was, you know, in college. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and, and my views with them were like it, it cheating like hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it wasn't like anything where I said, like, they were smarter, they worked harder. Not saying they, they don't work hard. Right. But nothing that, you know, made an a, a, a imprint in my mind to say, As hey, they do something different or better than what or they were we do. Right. Exactly. Right, right. And, uh, and with sometimes we see, like sometimes with whites, you know, you see white is right, black is wrong, you know, black is bad, white is good. You know, we, 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 I think a lot of so many people have these different views and stuff like that. But when you look at people and sometimes or they even look at you, what we want to discuss is, is this stuff real or not? Well, I think sometimes people's perception are, 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 are steeped in their experiences mm -hmm. with those people. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we get a, we get experiences from those people, and that gives us the perception that all of them are like that. Yeah, and that may not be the case, but that's what we've experienced. Yeah, absolutely. So on that on that note, we that's what we've experienced. So that's all we know because that's all we've experienced for them. So that gives us them that perception of them. Good 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 point. You get what I'm saying? Good point. That's one of the things we're gonna go over tonight's show too. Yeah. That's what that's one of the points we're gonna go over tonight's show. It's a great point. Um, and even with people have ideas with having no interactions, mm -hmm. just what they heard, I was say, what they seen out. on TV, what they hear in the music, mm -hmm. you know, and everything like that. And that's why I say a lot of times we can be our own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you sit here and make music about you, you kill the bee, you rape the this, you rob, you shot a this, that, and that, and you go into a corporate belt boardroom as an artist, saying what you do, and you know they got certain ideas, you right. know, a certain ideas set up, or certain things, you know, or you're not even part of that culture. And just you being the same race, people have ideas. Man, do you think he, you think he smoke pot? Do you think he do this? Do you think he do that? You know what I mean? And yeah, nothing to do with it. So you spend your time proving what you're not instead of what you are. If you try to prove or not, yeah. they believe what they believe. That's true. And, 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 and that's humans. Hey, we can be the same way. You know, that's it. You have some, a lot of people that are truly open minded and take hey, you know, till you show me different, I'm just gonna take your face value as that. But I think. Inherently, we all have some prejudice mm -hmm. here and there, uh, 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 being humans and everything. The unfortunate part about it is that, uh, as blacks, from an ownership standpoint, we we're behind in a sense. We don't have a lot of things that we own. So even when we try to create our own opportunities, we sit kind of lagging behind. So much we're doing certain things. Now I do think we're doing a whole lot better than the overall image. That's, that's, that, that's, that's per that perpetuated in terms mm -hmm. of black folks not doing this. We don't own this. We don't own that. Uh, I think blacks making. A, I think we have a lot of black high income people. I don't we're know if we got like drives, but yeah. we're not making. We, we we could be a lot further than we, we we are if the opportunities. No, I, I agree. Were I given agree. To us. I agree. You get what but, I'm saying. Oh no, no, I, I absolutely agree. But I think that what I was about to say is we have a lot of high income black. Income earners, but we don't have a lot of wealthy blacks. You know, they're making the money, but necessarily from a retention or, or sitting there making it grow. Be other thing, we don't necessarily have that. Uh, but we still have more than you know. I think what we we ain't got this. We had this. We <laughs> said self destruction. We slaves and oh we, we man, say that though. Shit, we, we ain't that, that damn bad. But that's the thing about it. Where again, we're creating perceptions of ourselves because again, we're in a world now that information is shared. So. Mm -hmm. When you put stuff on the web about black folks, yeah, black fo other black folks see it and read it, but the white folks do too. That's Same true. thing. And, and we see that in terms of just how media is held, whereas a brother, you can say some things about black folks and share it, and you may be trying to give tough love, but if a white counterpart says it, fire him. Hey, let's expose him. Right. And he might just become from a genuine sense, like, man, 
I talked to a couple of black guys just that, and that. It may just be from ignorance to, to, to post it. But again, they're on the same channels. Everybody got the same access to the same information. Right. And we got to be just cognizant of, uh, of that. And so uh, that's what tonight's show we're going to be going, you know, try to go into depth about um, uh, what we're talking about, those perceptions, are they a reality? Mm -hmm. uh, look at some of the ways people come to their views, uh, how personally we look at, you know, our views with stuff. And also, you know, come up with ways to kind of mitigate certain prejudices and biases that we may have towards other people and stuff. Again, this is Changing Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel, uh, the Facebook channel, or the Instagram. As uh, Lab said earlier, we have some uh, minor technical difficulties with the YouTube. Uh, don't let that stop you from going to the YouTube channel and subscribing <laughs> to it. But we'll have an uh, upload later on. But if you're tuning in on Facebook, please feel free to be interacting. Leave me comments. You got questions, anything like that, we'll get to you and stuff. Uh, same thing with the Instagram and stuff. Because, again, I, I, I do want to get everybody's views and ideas of what we're talking about and stuff. Because, like I said, the thought process that came up with this show was... I hear so many people saying what we are and what we are not doing and what other people are, but they really don't know the other people. And they don't, yeah, they don't know what all of us are doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you, 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 you know, we, we tend to be experts on what we feel like we're, we're the cl closest associated with. Right. So again, right. Man, I had to fix this, man. It was a good little stick I had, man. <laughs> I and, uh, I see you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, let me say this. Now, now again, when we talk about in terms of perception, you have a lot of people that have uh, different uh, viewpoints and everything in terms of working independently, uh, how we should be economically and everything like that, you know, I probably have a little bit more knowledge in terms of me being a finance person and uh, dealing in economics and everything. I don't necessarily say because we have to have just a separate economic system. We're dealing in the free capitalist market, and I think people got an opportunity to do certain things. Now, are you limited by what you can and can't do? And that's usually by association. But we're in a world from a, a, a commerce standpoint, and I might lose folks here and there. The world is flat. You can actually be in your underwear working at your computer and make millions of dollars a day millions of dollars a day and i just think uh, people have different ideas and i've studied uh, uh dr claude anderson in terms of the group economics and working together and everything like that i think in in, in theory is great i just would like want to see it in practice now when we had to do that in segregation times and stuff like that people were doing it but were we thriving or were some thriving that makes sense because right. mr charlie had a stove Mr. Such and Such had a TV place and it was a furniture place, a, a grocery store, but that still was maybe what one percent of that group mm -hmm. that was able to to be sufficient. You still had the vast majority of them; they weren't being able to do that. So, and you also were still limited in terms of even the ones that got educated and worked in schools, worked in hospitals, they only could deal with black folks. So they still were limited. Whereas when the gates got open, they got opportunity to do other stuff. I, I think. I think that people get the misconception that we can just have our own economic For one, an economic system takes hundreds of years to build, take years to build, for one. For two is that you cannot, you, you can't have a, your own economic system and not deal with anybody else. You have to. I think America is learning that by all the trade things we got going on because the world is so intertwined with everything that you can't be without something. And, not you know, you can't be without these people because they do this, you know, you know, Italians make Tinker Toys, or and the Chinese make this, and everybody else make that, and all that comes together to make one big thing that we all need. Mm -hmm. So the economic system is so intertwined with everything else, there's no way you can have just your own. There's no possible way. And, and I think, you know, to be honest with you, I don't think you lose any um, uh, racial self-conscious or where you're like, you feel like, okay, I'm in the less black because I'm dealing with other people. The thing of it is, like I said, theoretically, when you say, okay, we're we're being slaves because we don't have our own with this, that, and that, your own is what you own. Mm -hmm. And when you sit here and you're in a competition with, you know, we can say and say, well, Asians, they deal with Asians. Whites just deal with white. That ain't true. Whites making money off blacks. Asians making money off whites. 
everybody's making money off different people. At the end of the day, you got to find out what you're trying to do and, and do business. You know, just to kind of just share, like with me being a business consultant, dealing with business development with Majestic, people a lot of times, you know, you see it in, in, in theory, just you see it all the time. People can put a post on Facebook, you know, doing lashes. Uh, I paint houses and they post it on Facebook. And when you post it on Facebook, even when folks share it, what's going to happen is they're going to share it with who? People you know. The people you, you posted, the people that you friends with, they're going to see it. Mm -hmm. They may share it to a couple of people. So what the hell that done did? Right. So if those people that I know that already know I damn paint don't pick me, or if they haven't shared so I pick it up, I'm limited. But if I put some money behind it and spread it out between all Atlanta, we're talking about, wait, let's, let's just throw some, some hypothetical numbers. 800,000 people in Douglasville, 800,000 people in Hiram, 800,000 mm -hmm. people in, uh, what we got, uh, Lithia Springs. You only need just 1%. say, yeah, 1%, or you're talking about like 30, 40 people, and you put your advertising towards that, you got that. Mm -hmm. But when you sit here and think, because I'm black, you just need to do it, you're not, I'm, you're a black painter, you're a black carpenter, but you're not a black businessman. The business is, and, is and, universal. And, and that's it. And, and that was, uh, that's why I think a lot of people need to get out of, we because I think naturally, we talked about this in one of the other previous shows in terms of, black businesses and everything like that. I think naturally, black folks gravitate to a black business. Mm -hmm. White folks gravitate to a white business. At the end of the day, the problem comes up, people ain't necessarily being business people. Right. And I think that's probably when we start getting these things where we're like perceptions, we're not supporting each other and everything. I think we do support each other. I think a lot of our businesses fail because we're, we own a business, but we're not true CEOs. Right. I seen that on the other week on a, uh, Shark Tank, uh, Mark Cuban called a young lady. He said, you know, you know, she kept saying, I'm a CEO. He said, you're not a CEO. You're a, you're a bit, you own the business. You're not a CEO because you're not thinking about forecasts and projecting mm -hmm. analytical stuff, what a CEO does. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Make those kind of decisions. But when you understand what an actual CEO is and the difference between that and a business owner, that's when people are like, oh, man, mm -hmm. it sounds good. You know, but in, in theory, you really don't know what it is. So. I understand people have different views in terms of just having a different economic system. I don't think you need that. I think that if you have a product that people want, people are going to buy it. Regardless. You know, I exactly. And you see that, honestly, that if Asians can own and dominate a, a market, being the hair care product or market that we buy everything from, uh, that show goes to show we can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to have their own thing to do it to make money off us right. and everything like that. So I just think that a lot of times people have ideas, and everybody's entitled to their opinion, but they really don't know how systems and, and theoretically, you know, economies and all that kind of stuff is set up and everything. Because, again, you're at a point right now, again, you, if you want, especially in the city of Atlanta, you just need a damn business license. But if you got the hustle and bustle and some knowledge behind it, then you can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You can make a lot of money. Now, the other thing is kind of like my video I put out a couple weeks ago. You just can't assume everybody want to buy the stuff you selling. <laughs> Somebody everybody don't, don't want pot ass soap. So. <laughs> everybody don't want to buy the kente cloth. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So again, you got to be real with it. Yeah. You know, I might not like your shea butter. <laughs> you know, again. But there are people that want it. And exactly. there are people all over this country that will pay a premium for your product. I think people got to get into the fact that you can make money off of other 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 races other ethnic ethnic people but what do you do when you make that money bring it back to your neighborhood and reinvest within your community because that's what most people do anyway that's what the chinese do asian italians all those people they make money off of us but they reinvest within their community so we see it as they only mess with their own kind but that's not the case yeah they reinvest within their community and do things within their community to upbuild their communities and maybe get I'm making money, so I'm reinvesting my community. Maybe help Poochie start his business. And yeah. that's another person that he going to do something. Then you spread seeds that way. But we still doing business outside our community because we got to make this money in order to uplift the community. But you, that's the difference. No, it, well, I, I think we, we do that. I just think that the way things are now, you know, just how the opportunities we got. That's why I'm about to say that word community is so vague because we spread out everywhere, communities are mixed, mm -hmm. they all this, that, and you know, and again, so what does it mean? Y'all just gonna deal with black folks, I'm just gonna deal with black folks in my area. What's gonna... Okay, so going back to Black Wall Street and Tulsa and Oklahoma, um, all the neighborhoods and the area and Rosewood in Florida, they go back 
Yeah, we get. I I get what he's saying. I understand what he's saying about those things. But I, also, those things were during times when we weren't allowed to associate with other races. But we weren't allowed to do those things. So yeah, we are going to be within our own community and build within our own community because we weren't allowed to do it outside of our community. Can those things be re? enacted or recreated maybe but i don't think so because we're so spread out now well we're not within this five or ten block radius of, of black wall street or the five ten block radius of rosewood uh, florida it's just not the same because we don't have to be within our own community now we don't have to be with a black community we can't go outside to the white community now we can't do that we, we don't we we can do that now so th th that's a little bit different well we're well, laughing i mean it probably the most simplistic form that's just looking at it like Back when hell you had to send messenger pigeons, or when you had the damn uh, uh, the Morse code, mm -hmm. or you sitting there, you know, you got the Pony Express. I mean, we got, I mean, we, things evolved. I, 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 I'm talking about you. You're talk, where we're in a day and time now. We don't have to write letters to loved ones. We can send a text or an email. So advances mm -hmm. in technologies have changed so many things. You don't, of course, those were different things that's going on. You don't have to be pegged in with that. In theory, those things, like you said again. A lot of that came up through restriction, exactly. not because, okay, that's what it is, and I just think what it was, that was, a, to me, a perfect example of people maximizing the opportunity for the situation they were in. So now you're in a different situation. Instead of reflecting back on what people used to do, maximize the opportunity you're in now. Because mm -hmm. we can go back in the yesteryear they did this, and yesteryear they did that and everything, but, you know, again, you know, back in the day, man, your tribe on this island, my tribe on this island, we blowing a horn, that's how we talk. We can call and just do a uh, FaceTime now. And that's what they're doing now. You know, again, we can't. The what We learn from the past, but we build towards the future. Mm -hmm. You can't sit here and, and dwell with that. You learn from that, but that doesn't mean, you know, again, things have changed. So you have those. Those were vibrant things again, but again, they were off of, you know, necessity we were and everything and stuff like that. If those people had the opportunities that we have now, do you think they'll be doing the same thing or they'll be trying to maximize the opportunity? That's the thing about it. I just don't think most people maximize opportunity. We do more reflecting on the past instead of trying to build on the future. And, and, and that's the thing about it. I, people are very, very knowledgeable on what we used to do, mm -hmm. but they don't spend the time on what the hell we can do. And that's well, the thing. That, that's what get lost. What we need to do. What, what we need to do. And again, you know, back with, you know, we were talking about, it, you know, just being those perceptions. Uh, that people have, that's what I want to really just look at in terms of, you know, again, we're, we're, we're getting into that where things that we see that what we can't do or what we're not able to do, again, we're going back to like, look, man, is that the case that we're not dealing with each other? We're not, you know, we're stuck. We're, are we mental slaves? Are we just really not putting the damn right things forward to do it? So is the person that is being successful, are they lucky? Are they a tom? Are they selling out? Or are they just working hard as hell? And taking advantage of stuff they can do mm -hmm. and that's what we got to sit here and just be realistic about some of these uh views and perceptions that we have where are they coming from so with that said uh before we spin into everything we talk about the different uh uh um uh, biases and prejudice this is changing lives hosted by yours truly deontay burden make sure you go to the youtube channel like share subscribe to the videos you know we're streaming live right now on facebook and instagram and please continue to excuse me chime in chime in in the different forms that we're on right now I appreciate all the support. I appreciate all the interaction that you guys are giving. We start looking at terms of just prejudice and biases. We look in terms of, uh, you know, a prejudice being something that's uh, uh, an unjustified or, or, or incorrect attitude you have towards somebody based solely on, like, you know, what they are, how, what group they're from. Just say he black or white, short or tall, Mexican, or Asian. Side, yeah, we just, yeah. exactly. That's just a prejudice we have of something, <laughs> where they from. And when you look at a bias, a bias is just usually just something, a preferential treatment you may or have, or a preferential thought you may have that's not fair to a certain thing. You know, usually just, you know, it's not a, a, a constituted with it. And so we look at. You what got was, something else to say? Well, no, this is Janice. I'm going to say that Janice might do a list or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, because because she's giving good energy. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, and that's great. But then on the flip side, of it, they can get out the car, and as soon as they see somebody else, they just change. Well, she's different. <laughs> <laughs> So is Janice the, right. the the rule of the exception? exception. Yeah, yeah. You, you gave me a, 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 yeah, like, like you said, a fun ride, and they get out of the car. Oh, Lord, y'all, yeah, Lord. Yeah, nah, yeah, nah. Janice yeah. just different. Yeah, she's yeah. different. She different. She must have got some German in her, you know, and everything. <laughs> 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 now, but I understand that, and, and that's the thing about it. We, we, um, uh, again, certain things, when people see certain things, um, uh, I'm going to go into this. I remember when I worked at the railroad, when I worked for, for Norfolk, and I remember, um, you know, whites, you know, you have all these, you know, people, a lot of, a lot of conservative white folks work there. And I remember just at that time, not saying that's the bulk, but what I learned quickly was, especially in the state of Georgia. Oh, yeah. White folks see black folks, you know, just, you know, they might not even be prejudiced or whatever. But there was one black person that white folks didn't ever see as black. There was one black person <laughs> That white folks never and seen that black. was the real master. No, no, it ain't no Martha King. It was Herschel Walker. <laughs> let me tell you something. When I you hear a white person, I don't care if they from South South Georgia, and they talk about Herschel, it was just he wasn't. But Herschel's not black. He was universal. Herschel is just you know just you that that's that's that, that is probably the only only black person. And you know Martha King. It ain't Barack Obama. You talk to any black person in the state of Georgia, they talk any white person, but they don't see him as being uh, uh, black. Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker. Herschel really? Walker. Yeah, about you, you and know, I you, worked at Railroad. We didn't talk about. No, I worked at Norfolk too. Talk, talk, we ain't talk about that. Talk, 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 talk to a, no. Well, y'all probably didn't bring it up. Yeah, I yeah. Worry, yeah, I'm not. But but just really, it, but it, this not even talking about sports. Just how they looked at him. Mm-hmm. They never looked at Herschel. You know, you understand. Georgia and Houston number three games the whole time. Herschel Walker was there. So we were talking about, you know, that's just them and like a God. But he's not looked at. And that was the thing about it when you just start talking about black. They can look at any other black. And we talking about prop. Hey, you might have a Klan member. But when it came to Herschel Walker, they didn't see him as being black. If you, if you, I, 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 and that's, that was one thing that stuck with me. When he talking about sports, just when they looked at it and everything. So it just go to that perception. Even you meet certain people in your life, you might say, eh, different. You know, where, where, you know, they're not normally how I think they are, you know, you know, or whatever. I used to get this all the time when I was younger. You know, uh, you got some well-mannered sons. Well, what the hell are they supposed to be? Now, again, uh, probably I've been my temperament. It might not mean no harm by it, but just saying it to me and stuff like that, well, what the hell, how the hell are they supposed to be? But people may have already had perceptions of this, that, and that. Could they have said the same thing to another white kid? I don't know. I look back at it now because I'm older. But I know then, well, what the hell my son's supposed to be and stuff right, like that right. and everything. So, you know, but I didn't like it then. I ain't going to say this how comfortable with it now. But uh, those are the kind of things that people have, in, you know, inside of them. you're so well-spoken. Yeah, exactly. You're so Ex- well-spoken. I used to get that a lot, like, you're so well-spoken. Exactly. Okay, what does that fuck that supposed to mean? Like, I speak because I read, and that just because you see me don't mean I'll be talking Broken English, that. exactly. And you flip it, you flip it the other way around. You may see a white person like, man, you listen to hip hop. Well, you yeah, don't listen to true, that and stuff true. like that. You like that? And, 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 and <laughs> why the hell I wouldn't? Right. I mean, you sold, you sold a hundred million albums. Why wouldn't I like them? Right. You know, y'all didn't buy all of them, so you know. And so you think about this stuff and everything. So that's kind of thing where we have. I'm just saying we're keeping an open mind. And so when we talk about some of these biases, like we got three biases that we're going to look in terms of they being explicit, implicit, and unconscious. And kind of like what Lab was talking about earlier, how people have different things that may have triggered certain stuff uh, with different bias. We'll go into that. First, we're going to look at explicit bias. Explicit bias is pretty much you just got an outward opinion about something regardless. Whereas, I don't like black folks. I don't like Mexicans. I don't like Asians. They ain't did a damn thing to you. You just don't like them. Mm-hmm. You don't like them. You don't want to deal with them. You sitting there like, that's just how I feel. That's just, you know, my bias. I don't want to deal with it. White is right. You know, hey, listen, I'm black power. I ain't dealing with no white folks. I don't care. I don't care what the Mexicans said. I don't want to hear nothing from them. You just, it's just explicit bias, no matter what it is. And the, the, the issue that can come along with that is nothing wrong with having your opinion. It's just when you start, it, it can affect negatively or oppress another person with doing certain things. But again, we're, we're looking at those different types of bias. First being explicit. The second being implicit. Implicit is more so things that aren't necessarily spoken or things that are done. Mm-hmm. Um, more so just kind of be uh, internally kept. And what I mean by that being implicit, you see this more so in practices or different professions where uh, 
certain hiring policies or, poli or, or practices by different companies or organizations or laws affecting people, those being the implicit bias where uh, we're looking at certain things where, um, uh, uh, where you see people having certain policies and procedures that affect people. Mm -hmm. We only want your hair cut and say, well, you can't have dreadlocks. You know, you mm -hmm. can't wear these kind of colors. You can't do this, that, and you know that some people, it may be common to them, but you don't want to do, you know, you do right, that, you know, right. again. So you can't, certain music can't be played at this time or whatever. Those are the kind of things that we talk about implicit biases. You see this a lot in uh, media. You may see some, some young black kids protesting, they're being peaceful, and you got, you know, a thing on it where thugs are doing this, that, and that. What the hell? You know, again, it's nothing that they've done. It's just internal things or different practices have been kind of placed in, put in place to kind of affect people without necessarily speaking them. And the third being unconscious. Now, unconscious is kind of what you said before, where you may have had a situation happen to you that has caused you to be, be, uh, be a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, an example being, just say your mother was a housekeeper for, your mother's black, she was a housekeeper for some older white women that were real mean to your mom mm -hmm. and everything. So you grew up, man, I hate older white women. Mm -hmm. I hate them. I hate them, man. They, it's, it's, and, you know, again, it's nothing that they that they did. It was just the lady worked for your mom. But they, what you said in terms of, you know, things that happened to you. You know, your father worked for um, this older white gentleman, and your dad came to your baseball game, and the, the, the guy fired him because mm -hmm. he came to your game. And that just destroyed your dad. And from that point forward, any white man in any kind of supervisor or authority position, you just couldn't stand. Right. Not that anybody particularly did anything <laughs> to you, but inherently because that happened. So, again, right. that's what we're looking at being explicit, uh, implicit, and unconscious uh, biases and everything. I didn't go through that too fast, did I? Nah, it's okay. Okay, and everything. But uh, those are the kind of things. But, like, when you brought that up, that said unconscious bias. Mm -hmm. Well, again, certain things that happen uh, in your life can, you know, affect certain beliefs and everything, be it right or wrong or fair. But it's just those are the triggers that cause it. Um, and, again, this is Change the Live, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel, like, share, subscribe to it. If you're on the Facebook or Instagram, make sure you're interacting uh, with everything. Leave those comments and everything. We got we got any comments, anything you come through? We got through? <laughs> Facebook on fire. Well, what are some of the things we want to talk about? Or just... <laughs> So basically, uh, basically, and she's not the only one seeing it. That basically, the media will pick out the person that they think, per se, is not gonna represent us in a in a in a, a positive light. Mm -hmm. They'll go pick out somebody with a pants sagging and is you know looking like, you know, the, like a thug, like like they think. But see, I think the problem with that is a lot of us, I, and she's not the only one seeing it. We all see that. A lot of us see it. And I've seen it where they've picked out that person, and he's actually spoken well, yeah. and it kind of shocked the the shocked the person. You know, they picked out the person with the sagging pants and the dreads, and thought he was a thug to, to speak about something that was going on in the news, and he actually was very articulate. So we see that we know that that goes on, and I think that we are adjusting to it because she's not the only person to see it. Well. You know, on, 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 and, and that's true, and we, all, and we all understand that, too. But, you know, they're still, they're still pooching from bank here, too. <laughs> and, again, sometimes I've been chosen because you, you may have thought you were going to get an uh, ignorant response, and you may get that, you know, may get something different that surprised you. The flip side of it, too, of it is, too, where I said earlier, sometimes we respond for some of them perceptions. True. Now, again, do we check? Do we check our, uh, uh, our sisters out here talking about I got the fattest this and the wettest that and I'm going to ride this to the thing pop and I'm going to get all your money? Huh? Do we check them? No, we, they, no, they no. celebrate that. They how, celebrate. Many, how many of y'all sisters know Megan, Megan Stag? <laughs> no. How many Megan Stag, no, uh, Megan Stag and, uh, so, uh, songs by heart? How many of us sit there and we check the brothers and sit here talking about uh, I bust him this and shot him this and shot him that and everything and the justification is that they speaking what they seen or what growing you know what they grew up seeing and stuff so again that doesn't justify people shedding the light on a 
uh, 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 people exposing, you know, those of us that may be, you know, not as sharp or articulate to kind of make it seem like that's how the majority of us are, I think also we don't do a good job policing ourselves. Because, again, like I say, this some of the stuff that we got out here right now that we see, you know, again, we trapping this, we trapping that. And I talked about that last show, you know, if you really, really, really knew what went on in the trap, and like I say again, you see what, you know, somebody mama doing, what somebody daddy doing for some dope, you don't want to talk nothing about no trap. See, the fun part about the trap, we're making songs and talk about it, is when, you know, we say we sold some dope, made some money, and I bought this car. But let's talk about the other side of the trap. When we want to get those perceptions, you know, what was your mama or auntie doing with your buddies in for $10? What was your daddy stealing or whatever? Or what was your partner, a partner killed another partner for $50 and everything? That's the real trap. Mm -hmm. But we ain't going to put that in the magazine, I mean, or put that in a, 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 a museum. That's the real trap. How many people are we talking about from, I would say, 35 to 50 that are really traumatized by the things that their parents did while they were on drugs that they had to see? That's the whole era. We talk about those late 80s through uh, probably early 90s or early 2000s that we went through a lot of trauma as a people, but we never talk about that. And we can I go back into how to... Well, 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 that's the thing. We can go back and to say that we didn't put the drugs here, we didn't put the drugs there. I get that part and everything. But at the end of the day, we still make what? Decisions to do things. And so when we start, I don't want to sh shift a lot of stuff in terms of uh, everything. I want to kind of keep it on, on track. What we're talking about as far as perceptions. But we got to be realistic about uh, uh, a person can create so, a certain perception and image. Somebody said that we, you sound like a good brother, but we, that you are ignoring the harsh realities of our society. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. We all we, we all know what our society is about, but you also also need to realize that um, we're not ignoring these harsh realities. We live them every day. There's no way I can. There's no way you can or I can go upstairs in the bathroom and wash off the black. We black every day. We have to live this reality every day. When we get the police behind us, we drive in our car, we know we good. We have to live those realities every day. There's nothing in our society that we do not that we ignore because we have to live them. But we also also have to know that we have to do things in order to do better and to move forward from those things so we don't so our next so our next generation don't have to deal with those realities. Just like our parents did, just like our grandparents did, just like they grandparents just like their yeah. parents did. Well, well, I'm gonna say this, man. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. So right. I mean, so I ain't gonna. Everybody's you know, reality is different well, anyway. Well, and, and to the point with that is, when we start looking at harsh realities, I had a conversation with my son the other day, and we were just talking about being, you know, say somebody being an entrepreneur, somebody going the corporate route. I just use myself for example. I got I got four damn degrees. I got my damn two bachelors, masters, I got, you know, associates. I got I got Pooch got a lot of education. You know what I'm saying? I have. Uh, complex business degrees, finance, supply chain, uh, and I say that to say that I went to corporate route, going to work on time, doing what I was supposed to do, uh, never had those negative performance reports, and I didn't get rewarded for it. Couldn't get promotions, couldn't do anything like that. Tried to do the whole thing, and it didn't work for me. And I've had friends that did the same thing or less, and they shot up the corporate ladder. I say this to say that what you just brought up, everybody's experience is different. Mm -hmm. What made it, you know, my, my partners, I know they ain't sell out. I know they weren't cooning. I know they weren't Tommy. They were just in a different situation where they did certain things and it worked for them. Mm -hmm. I did what I what I did. It didn't work for me. Uh, again, we can go into, you know, hey, well, they holding a the black man back, this, that, and that. She, I can go into that, but at the end of the day, I got to see. I got a choice to make. I'm gonna keep on applying for these damn jobs. If folks ask me no, I'm gonna get the hell on. So my I mean, family it, it, still got eat. My house still got be. My, my rent got to be paid. What, that, what, what, I, what you gonna do, right? It, it's that simple. Until it, we can we get our own economic system, we still got to deal with this reality. Well, and, and, and again, when we we can go in with the economic system. Shit, at the end of you, you you determine if you're gonna keep riding on their boat, make your own boat. You're gonna be cool with it, not cool with it. You have decisions to make. Mm -hmm. You know, what I always share, when I for when I when I became, you know, work for myself and be an entrepreneur, I I set that plan in place for two years where I kinda condensed everything to put myself in a situation to leave. So I'm not it's not that I'm not aware of harsh reality that people have, 
uh i'm just a big proponent of be aware of those things and then find a way to navigate to deal with it you know everybody's situation different again I, i'm just being honest with you i know the things that i've done and the things that i couldn't do and i have friends that did the same thing or did less like i said they had opportunities that i didn't get so uh, but again you know uh, uh, continue uh, where everyone be, you know, to give you different feedbacks or different what's going on because I do appreciate it and everything. I love the interaction. I, I want to say one. What's his name? Leon. Le, Leron. 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 What's his name? His name is Leron McGee. But I think Leron McGee. You are from the West Side. First mm -hmm. of all. Well, let, let me let me address Leron McGee. I, I just want to say we appreciate all your feedback, brother. We're not gonna get into the uh, uh, the uh, immigration program, EB five program, and all that stuff because that's a whole different that's a whole different topic. We'll get into that maybe later on, but right now we're just going to talk about perceptions of when we see other races, what do we think or how do they see us. We'll get into all that immigration stuff later on, and it does have an effect on us as a black community, but right now we're not going to get into that. So, Well, 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 well let me say this, too, and, 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 and again, and, and again, uh, uh, Brother Leron, uh, right now I can't necessarily look at the, the Facebook stream, and I appreciate you chiming in with everything, but I will say this, and I don't know if you are or aren't doing this, so let me say that first. But I don't think we're at no shortage right now of people recognizing and acknowledging issues that we have. We had a super shortage of people giving solutions on how we can fix it. So if we have, it, it, it's, it's, it's great to acknowledge shortcomings and issues we deal with. But at the end of the day, we just can't be stuck in a state of self-awareness of we know this is what's working against us. We got to, shit, if you're in the water, you got to know how to swim. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it is what it is. Uh, if we don't, we're going to sit here and be complaining and, and, and whining and bitching about, hey, we got this, we ain't had this, we ain't had that. I get that. We can. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of it is, is the people coming over here to this country that may have certain programs to help them out? Yeah. But it's still they come here without speaking no damn English or doing certain things. They, they do it, do it. Like I just said, Lab might come into a situation where he shoot up the corporate ladder and get all these opportunities. I go through a man I work for him, or I might get the same opportunities. It took him one year. It took me five years. Everybody path different. You know, when you start the race, you had a five-meter head start. I'm two, two or three feet behind the start line. At the end of the day, I got an opportunity to finish. Even if my path is more difficult, I can sit here and complain about it. But shit, if I'm in the race, I'm in the race. Mm -hmm. So that's just how it is, you know, again. So, brother, if you if you are great continue to do what you're doing that's why we got this platform here but if you aren't man let's, you know make make a platform where people have solutions because I, I can go through a history lesson and bring up all this shit. well we got problems with and stuff like that but we ain't really got a whole pathway of solutions and again when, when i when, when i look at solutions i do want to say this too we start looking at different economic theories and stuff like that show it in practice show it in practice because I can sit here and tell you, you know, how I feel like we can put some wings on our back and soar in the air. But show it in practice, mm -hmm. you know, and everything like that. Because, again, we all can just sit here and talk what we can and should do. But uh, I think if people uh, do a, a good job putting stuff in blueprints, and that's why I, I hope that's what I'm doing, I've been doing for the past year and a half with this show, giving people ideas, showing, you know, different information with this and Mr. Short Dollar, uh, path where people can empower themselves, giving, you know, where we have conversations to talk with each other and stuff. So I appreciate it, brother, chiming in, because that's one of the forefronts of the show. Mm -hmm. We can talk, we can agree to disagree and everything like that. And I think that's one of the, uh, I do think that's an uh, issue with a lot of people in the black community where I ain't looking at it like he crazy, he looking like I'm crazy. Brother, just think differently. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, I think we, we, we are the vast shortage of people coming to the, the plate where, hey man, let's try this strategy and implement it and everything. But um, again, again, if you guys are on all the different platforms, continue to chime in, I appreciate all the support. This is Ch uh, Change Your Lives, hosted by your truly, Deontay Burden. Now we're going to swing it back for a second. We look at some of those remedies uh, to kind of help you when you deal with some of the preconceived uh, biases that you may have. Uh, when we start thinking about racial inequality, racial biases and stuff like that, they're always going to be bad. But we got to find ways that within ourselves and that we can work on certain things. Again, uh, until you know certain things or you've been exposed to, to truly been exposed outside of maybe grocery store or television or radio interactions you truly don't know and you can't control how other people see you you can't and again you know like the young lady has said when they get in her they get in a car she, she she give them a, 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 a interaction with a person that's a certain way but that's an interaction but their interactions plural may be vastly different that 
you know, like I say, they may look at you just as the exception and not the rule. Right. So first of all, I want to just say things we can help mitigate it, you know, um, try to avoid pre-suspicions. You know, try to just, you know, look at it like, man, look, let me take care of everybody, you know, face value and just mm-hmm. say, look, you know, I'm not going to sit here and look at every China man, every Asian guy, I'm like, every Asian guy is wrong, every Hispanic is crazy, this, that, and that. I'm taking it on face value that this is a square person. And until they show me wrong, you know, I'm going to go from there. Right. Uh, the second thing be is uh, examine your preference in light of your actions. So a lot of times we go into it with already preferential ideas. You know, I'm five, I'm five, six. A lot of women want taller guys. You ain't going to get it here. You know? <laughs> but, but to that point, you don't want to have where I prefer white, I prefer black, and it could negatively affect people. Now, ain't that wrong. What you want is what you want. Mm-hmm. But I think the issue come up when it starts suppressing. And you can't have it both ways. Look, I want to deal with a black-owned business. I want to just have this stuff going on. But then you turn around, now you want to deal with so many white corporate corporations and all that kind of stuff. Hey, look, you got, you know, look, you're mm-hmm. on the seesaw both ways now. Got to think about that and stuff. So, uh just kind of examine those preferences and everything now, if, if, especially if you're going to be dibbling, dabbling on both sides right. uh, with doing it. The third thing is, I always ask if my perspectives or my actions uh, pertain, how would it uh, pertain to somebody I love? You know, when we start thinking about, I don't like white folks, or I don't like Asians, then you, you, your daughter bring this white boy home and daddy, we're in love and he's this, that, and that. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. And I'm pregnant. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> my friends say Elizabeth. True, true Elizabeth. story. True story. <laughs> Elizabeth, I'm coming. Elizabeth. <laughs> true story, right here. True story. <laughs> See, and we had it going and stuff. It happens, and we got to sit here and ask ourselves, like, look, man, how, I don't know how this is gonna happen. How we're gonna do it and everything. So that's the kind of thing um, to kind of have in your mind. How would that? How would you deal with that if that particular thing happens? Uh, the fourth being seek advice from people who are affected. Those people that have been um, prejudiced, uh, that have been uh, negatively affected by uh, racial bias and stuff like that. How did it affect you? It give, may give you a certain empathy or a certain thought process that look, just me thinking this way, you know, I, I might like it, but it's really messing people up. This has really had a major impact on people in a bad way that I really may not comfortable with. You may not give a darn about it, but it's just something to think about uh, just to kind of, you know, uh, get information on that. The fifth is uh, examine uh, the, honest, the honesty of your uh, your group or your organization. A lot of times we be dealing with certain businesses and everything like that. In theory, I think most businesses are designed, you know, from a, a standpoint of making profits and cutting costs and doing all the normal stuff businesses do. But when you start dealing in terms of the people that are running it, mm-hmm. they still got their preferences and everything like that, you know. Again, you're supposed to go through a regular, uh, you look at that with the NFL with the Rooney Rule. They're supposed to interview so many black uh, uh, black candidates, but at the end of the day, they bring one in, and then they interview eight white boys and pick who the coach. But you got a, what, 80, 90, 80, uh, 70, 80% black lead. And again, so in, in theory, it's supposed to be done this way, but at the end of the day, people are doing it, you know, uh, from a way. practice standpoint, exactly, from their own way. So it's just something to think about. Again, this is Change the Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Man, listen, I want to tell you guys thanks. I really appreciate everybody been chiming in so far on the uh, uh, the show this week. Been all the way live. Again, anybody that's on there, you send it, uh, you've been sending any kind of feedback or any kind of interaction on the show. On the show, continue to do it. I don't. I've never been the type of person. I got some. You know, again, I'm a I'm an army sergeant, so I got some real thick skin. So I I encourage people to get their opinions and stuff like that. And I ain't gonna. I ain't that sensitive to get defensive or whatever, anything like that. You're entitled to it. But on the flip side of it, show the same respect. We're going to – you're we have to learn as adults, you know, especially with brothers dealing with each other, we got to agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. That's how that brother feel. Now, we can ask each other why, and I can tell you why, and you tell me why, and mine can get you lost and yours can get me lost. But I respect that's how you feel. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, if our end game is us growing, us – developing us being greater that's all that should matter exactly. not that i'm right and you wrong or whatever and everything like that we should help each other grow from that so and i hope that's what we're doing with this show you know it concludes with everything like i said when i came up came with the idea a couple of uh, weeks ago about today's show we were talking about when looking at other races your perception of reality or is theirs a reality of yours um i see far too often well again we we, we go to 
you know, the nail place or we go to the, the Asian supermarket, the Indian owns the gas station, uh, the white guy, he owns this particular establishment we go into, and we have those, um, shit, five, ten minute interactions, if that, with these people, mm-hmm. and just say that's what we do. And I, honestly, you really don't damn know. I really don't know if the Asian people are supporting each other's community. I don't know. I don't know if the if the, the guy that owns the nail shop goes, leave there, and go to Starbucks. I don't damn know. <laughs> but we just got this damn idea he's going to the, the, the Thai tea house, <laughs> keeping his money there. Then they go in there, you know, or, you know, it's just that, you know, the a, the Indian guy leaves, you know, his 7-Eleven franchise and goes to the hookah spot. And, and, and you know and everything then he gotta we don't damn know we don't damn know that ain't your damn friend you don't interact with him but it's just some kind of idea that you feel that's what's going on because you heard it or whatever right they don't damn know if you just a, a, a hip-hop fan gospel fan rock and roll the country because you black they say think you are and we just don't know and i think people have to get out of there and start using their damn brain and be a Stop being so over analytical and assume a certain stuff. Right. And I think if we challenge ourselves to be the best us and stop using uh, uh, challenges as roadblocks and start more so using them as motivation, I think we'll be a whole lot further in life. Mm-hmm. Because, again, I, I say this all the time, man, we had no shortage of uh of, uh, of people giving out this was wrong, this was this, that, and that. No shit. I read the book. I, I seen the shit on YouTube just like you did. You know, <laughs> I seen it, but how we fix it? Now, when you come with your solution, let's do this. And I'm like, well, no, nah, that don't work. I tried that before. How did you do it? What did you see it? Well, I just heard about it. Or I practiced it in doing this and this how I did it. Oh, dang, I ain't never thought about it that way. Let's have those kind of conversation as to, uh, again, being a whole large group of people giving out these hi- hypotheses and all this uh, analysis about what's going on, try to dig a little deep and try to get solutions. Mm-hmm. Because now a solution, remember, a solution, damn is irrefutable. A fact is irrefutable, right? Right. Right? Right. You know, this is wood. This is a cigar. This is a microphone. We can't dispute that. Right. Now, if it's high density, high tech, that's all about opinion. You know what I'm saying? If this is seasoned tobacco, unseasoned, super flavorful or whatever, <laughs> That's all about opinion. We got to understand that there's a difference between fact and opinion and people uh, putting things out that's irrefutable or not. And I think if we make a conscious effort to get in a situation where we're doing things that can't be disputed instead of things that can be debated, I think we'll be a whole lot further along, not just as a race, but just as people in general Mm -hmm. and and everything. But, uh, again, man, this is Change Live, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. If you can't. Chime in any one of the forums, being YouTube. Where again, we're gonna upload it again for the breakups and everything. Um, Instagram. I, I seen you guys come in and stuff like that. You know, I gave you a wave and everything. Everybody was uh, going on the uh, the Facebook and everything. I appreciate the support. Appreciate the interaction. If you have anything you want to discuss further, inbox me. Shoot me. You know, hey, like I said, I ain't sensitive. We ain't on one person. We ain't finna be going back and forth, calling. I ain't nothing feminine about pooch. I tell you that right now. I ain't finna take it personal. We ain't gonna go and out. We ain't gonna do that. But I'm gonna be straight up with you. Where? What do you think? And give me an example. We ain't gonna go, you know, and everything. I ain't, I ain't built like that, you know. So again, you know, please, please continue to support. Love you guys. Thanks a lot. Look forward. We're gonna have an awesome, awesome, awesome February plan for you guys. Any ideas, any feedback, and stuff, shoot it to me and everything. But make sure you go to those YouTube channel, subscribe to it. Change your life, host by yours truly. And I forgot to mention. Mr. Short Dollar, where we talk about finance, business, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing. Thanks for all the support, you guys. See you guys next week. Love you.